Greetings, my fellow Freedom Love Sovereign Thinkers. This is LL3 News Podcast. My name is Craig, transmitting from the beautiful Swampy Mangroves of South Florida. And today's date, March 3rd, 2017. It's on a Friday. Yep, cloudy, nice and breezy. By the new rivers of Fort Lauderdale, Florida. And uh, transmitting at CJ's Java Lounge, located at 400. Southwest First Avenue, or it'll take you right to Northwest New River Drive in the Yacht Club building, right by off the southwest section of the Andrews Avenue Bridge. Yeah, so maybe cloudy, but not that dismal. Probably gonna rain. I don't know why not. It's windy. Looks like all the Supreme Breakers are coming out. The little boys and girls think they can party. <laughs> Ah, can't condemn them all. Life's a learning experience. Hopefully they could, we could meet, greet, and teach. Yeah, so I was just, um, checking out some articles yesterday. And, um, of course, the big one, the controversial one right now is um, the health care plan, GOP's health care plan, is being concealed. And Senator Rand Paul and a couple others are questioning it. How come it's being hidden without the serv- elected servants' uh, knowledge or transparent to the people? Can we say the medical version of TPP or TPP revisited? Of course, anything is possible. Yeah, and of course, you got the career politician, AG. Attorney General Jeff Sessions is still going after him. Oh, he lied under oath. And the same ass wipes that are calling him out, <laughs> they're really freedom friendly. Especially uh, Pinocchio of, of uh, Senator Charles Schumer. I got to say one thing about him. His actions and attributes make Bannock Arnold a undisputed war hero of the American Revolution. <laughs> That's all I gotta say. <laughs> I just gotta laugh even and dumb down Nancy Pelosi. <laughs> Twilight Zone, like like Bizarro World, of course. I'm not just going after them because they're Democrats, but I just like a mess tyrannical quacks. I know where I treat the same thing with the Republicans as well. Too many folks is going focusing on that left right paradigm still. You're wasting your energy, my friends. Got to examine everything in the bigger picture. So, of course, they're going back after Russia. Yeah, how manly. Let's go after Russia, the Russian finish. Let's do the new boogeyman. We can't figure that one out. You know how that goes, my friends. Mind Control 101. They don't want you to contemplate for yourselves. They want to be your thought nannies. Just another example of bread and circuses distractions and all that good stuff so yeah okay, we're going to continue on here with some articles of course everyone's addressing that uh, Donald Trump has been approved by the Senate I'm trying to figure that one out by billionaire Wilbur Ross you know, he was a former managing director at Rothschild Inc <laughs> Sold his behind to the banksters of the world, right? He sworn in as Secretary of Commerce. And as I'll be talking about a couple of things here, a few things. What he's worth and some uh, secret society, allegedly. So, um, it is hilarious. Status quo continues. Oh, not exactly. Be quiet. Time for everyone's there. Partisan defense mechanized rhetoric. Don't worry, I love these guys too, but sometimes there's times I like to put a lid on it or a muzzle. Sometimes I need one, so I can admit that. Well, let's just start it off of here it's from the Daily Sheeple. And it says here Billionaire Wilbur Ross, former managing director of Rothschild Inc., for 20 years, sworn in as Secretary of Commerce. 
billionaire Wilbur Ross, who spent 20 years not just as Trump's pal, but as the head of Rothschilds, Inc.'s bankruptcy advisory business, was sworn in today as our new Secretary of Commerce, a 79-year-old who will serve as the liaison between Trump and the business community, received strong support from both Republicans and Democrats about which Ross responded. Finally, building America up again may become a bipartisan thing. Well, destroy America definitely was. Ross, who was supposed to help bring back jobs despite having shipped some 2,700 of them overseas at his own companies since 2004, will get straight to work on renegotiating with trade with Mexico and China. It's funny because it's a couple of videos, him and uh, got sworn in with his brand new $500 suit and his wife. They're all part of looking at us like a bunch of piss ants and everyone's like applauding. Yay! How, how thoughtful. Well, I wasn't impressed. When I hear the Rothschilds, Inc., (laughs) it's like saying, yeah, we're going to ram it down your rear end. The tyrannical way, my friends. Global dominance. So, we're just going to check out what Forbes have to have a little list here from Forbes 400. And now 400, Wilbur Ross Jr. Ranked 232. As of March 3rd, 2017, he's worth $2.5 billion. Age 79. I can't say he don't look that bad, but still, not impressed. Source wealth, investments, self-made, self-made score, a seven. He resides in Palm Beach, Florida. Hey, right along, uh, that's the, the, near the, co- the coastline, past the intercoastal, of course. Palm Beach, Florida, where a lot of the glamorous people are there, including that like, great historical landmark, the Breakers Hotel, where if your name if your name's not Winthrop Thompson the Third, they will spit on you. That's what I experienced when I worked over there. But I'm not saying the Breakers are it's a bad place in general. But the people who go there, I'm better than you. <laughs> One time I walk in there with my nose in the air. I'm at the Breakers. <laughs> Some people were pretty offended. How sensitive! How sensitive are these folks? He has two children. He, Education, Bachelor of Arts, Science, Yale University, Master of Business Administration, Harvard University. So a distressed asset investor, Wilbur, Wilbur Ross, has a new job titled U.S. Secretary of Commerce, appointed in November 2016. If confirmed by the U.S. Senate, Ross will replace fellow billionaire Penzi Prisker in the role after Donald Trump's presidential term begins on January 20th, 2017. Ross, who was served as an economic policy advisor to the Trump presidential campaign, has known Trump for over two decades. Ross spent 25 years heading Rothschild, Inc.'s bankruptcy practice before starting investment firm W.L. Ross & Company in 2000. He sold it in 2006 to investment management firm Invesco for about $375 million dollars but remains chairman and chief strategy officer. In August 2016, W.L. Ross & Company agreed to pay $2.3 million of fines to the SEC related to charges that it didn't properly disclose how transactions fees would be allocated. The firm did not admit to do any wrongdoing. I'm just, you know, it's like, you pay, you paid it, you admit it. Come on. Pathetic. It's like, oh, this is a spit in the bucket for them. An avid art collector, Ross has some 40 works by Belgian serialist, surrealist Rene Margritti, as well as contemporary pieces by Chinese and Vietnamese artists. So how cute, right? Not really too intrigued by any means, because especially Rothschild Inc. That's like a smoking gun, man. And it doesn't matter if you worship Trump or hate him. This is a question that people should be focusing on. Something that is controversial, critical, and that has merit. So everyone complaining about like, they lose their civil rights because of the president. Please, rights are natural born. 
It's not picking. It's not picking the petty pebble battles. This one here is like more of a boulder. So I've been like, you know, going through a couple of articles so far, trying to find out more about Wilbur Ross. And this is interesting here, which uh, David Icke put on here, a couple of articles. And I found this one interesting by sttpml.org. And it says here, the billionaire banker fraternity where cross-dressing new members make jokes about Hillary Clinton and drunkenly mock the financial crisis. And this was here by James Nay from the Daily Mail UK. Actually, it was, it was out a couple of years ago, almost three years now. And it says here, leader, this is a billionaire, billionaire financer, Wilbur Ross, and his wife, Hillary Gear. Ross is the grand swipe of chief, or chief, of Capi Beta Phi, the secret society for elite Wall Street bankers, a journalist who gate crashed a secret fraternity. A billionaire bankers has laid bare the booze fuel cross dressing antics of its members as they openly mocked the 99% and made light of the num- numerous government bailouts of 2009. Sneaking into the swanky St. Regis Hotel ballroom in January 2012, he where he was assumed to be a waiter. Kevin Roos became the first outside to witness the Monty Python Escort induction ceremony for Kappa Beta Phi. New members, known as neophytes, traps said, around other masters of the universe dressed in leotard and gold quitted skirts and wigs to then perform vaudeville-style acts that included homophobic and sexist jokes and even a parody of ABBA's dancing queen called Bailout King. Over 200 multi-millionaire and billionaire bankers and finance were in attendance at the annual event so chock full of power and money that Roos felt that if you had dropped a bomb on the roof, global finance as we know it might be, might have ceased to exist. Order hand at the fraternity which has existed since the end of the Great Depression. Walk around the well fabricated, lubricated, excuse me, dinner wary purple velvet moccasins and bordered with the fraternity's Greek letters. Lavish, this is a ballroom of the St. Regis Hotel in Manhattan where Kappa Beta Phi met in January 2012 and were infiltrated by reporter Kevin Roos. Served up a luxury meal of lamb and foie gras. Executives from nearly every too big to fail bank, private equity mega firm, and major hedge fund were in attendance at this prestigious and secretive event. Each new member who has to cross dress at the start of the evening is required to perform for the benefit of the other guests in their costume wigs, believing that they are safe under the mantra of what happened and the Regis stays in the Regis. Hmm, that sounds like uh, Skull and Bones, right? Or in the Bohemian Girl, in the Bohemian Club. I will continue on here. Written up for a piece in New York Magazine, Roos describes how millionaire Paul Quelly, who works with Welsh, Carson, Anderson, and Stowe, performed a skit with Ted Virtue, who works with Mid- Ocean Partners. Roos heard them reel off a particularly unfunny joke about a former lady. What quest Hugh, what is the biggest difference between Hillary Clinton and the catfish? A answer. One has whiskers and stinks, and the other is a fish. Okay. The rich pair even threw in a homophobic jive for good measure. Q. What is the biggest difference between Barney Frank and, F- and Fenway Frank? Answer, Barney Frank comes in different size buns. Some, some, some of the performances seem to skirt at the edge of taste as Warren Stevens, an investment banking CEO, went on stage in a Confederate flag hat and sang referencing the financial crisis to tune of Dixie. Club, former New York Mayor Michael Bloomberg is listed as a member of Kappa Beta Phi. Although Roos did not witness him at the January 12th induction of new members. The lyrics include in Wall Street Land, and Wall Street Land will take, will take our stand, said Morgan and Goldman. 
but we better get some loans so quick to get the Fed man. Led members of Wall Street Secret Society, Wilbur Ross, Grant Swipe, an American investor, estimated Forbes in 2011 to be worth 1.9 billion. So this is like a few years, like four years ago, three years ago, excuse me. Alexandra, Alexandra Lepanto, Grant Swipe from 2000 to 2004, President and CEO of the Municipal Bond Franchise Labrador Company, Peter Kellogg, Grant Swipe from 99 to 2000. Businessman and philanthropist with a net worth estimated by Forbes at around 2.3 billion. Michael R. Bloomberg, former mayor of New York City and business magnate, worth who is the 13th richest man in the world, with a fortune of 31 billion. He's the same giant old asswipe that does um mayors against legal guns. The tree is his entity, right? Absolutely. Lawrence Fink, Chairman and Chief Executive Officer of Black Rock, is the, is the largest management money firm, money management firm in the world with assets of three point five trillion dollars. Paul Tudor Jones, founder of Tudor Investment Group, estimated to have a net worth of US dollars three point six billion. Another two financiers, Bill Moreau, who is executive at the Blackstone Group, and Emily Henry who is a hedge fund manager with Tiger Infrastructure Partner and former Assistant Secretary of the Treasury, did a two-man comedy sketch. In it, Murrow played the role of a liberal radical while Henry played a part of a wealthy baron, who said that it looked like a debate between the 99% and the 1%. At the one point, Henry said, Bill, look at you. You're pathetic, you liberal. You need a bath. To which Henry shouted, my God, you callow, insensitive Republican. You don't know. Don't you know what we need to do? We need to create jobs. Past and current neophytes included former New York Mayor Michael Bloomberg and members of the wealthy Rockefeller family. Fraternity was started in 1929 by 4C William, wait, 4C plus William and Mary students, and his quest is described as depicting a macho right hand, and a proper Seville row suit, and a Turnbull, an Asser shirt sleeve. The Callison Group's motto, Dum Vimas Edimus Ed Abiramis, or Latin, While we live, we eat and drink. Current head of Kappa Beta Phi, or Grand Swipe, is Wilbur Ross, is 76 at the time. Known for re- restructuring failed companies and hard industries, and who was conservatively estimated to be worth $1.9 million billion. Other members include IEG CEO Ben Benomach, Alan Ace Greenberg, the former chairman of Bear Stearns, and President Obama donor Mark Larcy. See what's going on here, my friends? Hopefully you're paying attention. Bruce describes that membership is not just for the successful in banking. There are also wildly unsuccessful members such as former Lehman Brothers CEO Dick Food and former Bear Stern CEO Jim Kayan. Exalted, okay, excuse me, Exalted Company Alan Ace Greenberg, former Bill Bear Stern chairman and CEO in 2008, was still attending Copper Beta Phi, a secret society for Wall Street. Oh, Elite Wall Street Finances in 2012, as with Mark Larcy, who has donated to President Obama. Describing the consummate ease with which, which he entered the party, Roos details how he witnessed Ross induct 21 new members in January 2012. Good evening, Exalt High Council, former Grant Swipes. Grant Swipes in waiting. Fellow Wall Street Kappas, Kappas from the Spring Street and Montgomery Street chapters and worthless neophytes. Ross exclaimed at the beginning of his introductory remarks. First outside the infiltrate, Kappa Beta Phi is in, in, in its eight decade lifespan. Bruce called the fraternity so exclusive it is, a, it is akin to a one percenter club. Sneaking in part of his research book, sneaking as a part for his research. Reese Hitchens Richard's book, Young Money, Bruce was interested. 
to see why so many eager young men work ridiculously long hours when they start banking, but seem to have a drastic personality change as they age and become so successful. Staying long enough to record skits and speeches given by new inductees and to take a few pictures. Roos was exposed when he tried to video a parody version of I Believe, the big number from musical The Book of Mormon, for which the neophytes had dressed as missionaries. Indeed, the lyrics were changed to include the line, I believe that God has a plan for all of us. I believe my plan involves a seven-figure bonus. Bust it. Michael Norgas is on the left side principal of Fortress Investment Group, LCC, and co Chief Investment Officer of Fortress Marco Fund caught Kevin Roos in the act while Ted Virtue told some colored jokes he was inducted. There's photos on here too, you can check it out. Billionaire investor Michael Novogratz, a former Army helicopter pilot, rumbled Roos and tried to make to take try to take his phone off him. Roos described Novogratz as having the impression of, described Novogratz as having the impression of having consumed alcohol that evening. The fight attracted the attention of Rupert Ross and a former Grand Swipe called Alexandra Lemonthal, who ran over and escorted Roos outside with his pictures and audio recorded intact. Roos alleged that Ross tried to bribe him to keep it quiet with the lure of exclusive stories, saying, I'll pick up the phone anytime and get any help, any, you, any help you need. Yeah, the people in this group could be very helpful, Lebanon chimed in. Chimed in. If you just keep their privacy in mind, however, Roos was not swayed and printed his story in New York Magazine as part of the promotion for his book. He drew the conclusion that the upper ranks of finance are composed of people who have completely divorced themselves from reality. Not self-aware, no self-aware or socially conscious Wall Street executive would have agreed to be part of a group whose tactic mission is to make light of the financial sector foibles. Not when those foibles have resulted in real harm to millions of people in the form of foreclosures, wrecked 401ks, and a devastating unemployment crisis. Something to really deep think about this, my friends. Hamilton's curse is still pursuing or proceeding. That's how you have to examine these areas. This is absolutely treasonous. That's the word. They are, people like that are the real enemies. You folks, even go even now, if you know this, you see uh, Michael Bloomberg speak, ask him about that disgusting organization he's in. How's, how's your high heels, Gino Bloomberg? Because you make all the they make all this money, we should all look up to them like peasants. Don't fall for that Jim Jones syndrome. And I know many of you out there aren't, which is good. And it, ha- it is growing progressively, but slowly. Things are happening, and I always observe. That's why a person like myself always examine events. In all walks of life. Plus sharing this with others. I want people to look at the world a lot broader. Instead of tunnel division. Or have a brain. Of a a mind. Of a broom. That's why I never jumped in the hype. Some people gave me that too. Because I wasn't going bow down to Trump. Or Hillary, the bread and circuses elections of 2016. That's why I'm real critical of some of these so-called left, some of these uh, anti-Trumpsters out there. Because they're doing it without any meritability. When you protest on somebody, back it up with facts. This right here should get people up in arms. Regardless if you support 
the Trump administration or not. Like I said before mentioned, stop the petty pebble battles. It's pathetic, waste of energy, or other words, useless. Gotta really think about this and do your own homework, research, and share this with others. Even send it to me, send information to me. I, I, there's plenty of places you could um, deliver it to, and I'll, I'll check it out. I'm not gonna be uh, not gonna be shocked or surprised or anything like that. But it'll be honorable discussions is a plus. All right, that'll be enough of that douchebag. And the next one just came out like an hour ago. And this is uh, still the morning. Then from Miami Herald, judge shoots down Miami-Dade deportation policy adopted to follow Trump immigration order. A Miami-Dade County policy adopted in response to a Trump administration executive order to keep immigrants facing deportation in jail on behalf of the federal government violates the Constitution, a judge ruled on Friday. The ju- judge's ruling was a rebook of the Miami Ma- Miami-Dade Mayor Carlos Jimenez's decision in the face of potential cuts in federal funding to allow county jails to hold immigrants awaiting deportation by federal judges. The measures have sparked protests and by anger by many immigration advocates in South Florida. Circuit Judge Milton Hirsch wrote that the policy violates the 10th Amendment, which limits the, re- the reach of the federal government over states. Of course, we must protect our country from the problems associated with unregulated immigration. And Miami Day Circuit Judge Milton Hirsch wrote, we must protect our country from a great many things, but from nothing so much, so much as from the loss of historic rights and liberties. The immediate impact of the ruling was unclear. For one thing, the judge did not explicitly order Miami Day jails to stop honoring requests by the federal government to hold people slated for deportation. Hirsch's rulings also could be delayed by an appeal with which the mayor's office said would be filed immediately. It's the Miami Dade County's position that immigration is a federal issue should be handled in federal court, according to Mayor Spokesman. Miami Dade County is planning an immediate appeal to the Third District Court of Appeal. Since 2003, Miami-Dade County has stopped honoring most requests by federal authorities to hold undocumented or deportable jails inmates, even though their sentences were up uh, or their cases closed. County officials expressed concern because the feds were not reimbursing the cost of detaining. But when President Trump took office in January, he threatened to cut federal funding from so-called sanctuary cities that did not cooperate with federal immigration authorities. Miami-Dade's political leaders has long resisted labeling itself that. Coercion achieved by financial starvation is no less effective than coercion achieved at Swords, Swords Point, Judge Hirsch wrote. Jimenez citing concerns about losing federal money ordered the county judges to honor all requests by immigration authorities, a decision that contrasted with some big city mayors who vowed to resist Trump's efforts. Federal agents have to have up to 48 hours to pick up someone being held in the county jail. The county controversial policy was challenged by James LaCroix, LaCroix, a Haitian national who had been living legally in Miami under what is known as temporary protected status, which was afforded to the island nation in 2010 after a series of natural disasters. But LaCroix, at at some point, was ordered deported after he continued to rack up felony arrests for driving without a valid license. LaCroix was jailed in late January, two days after Jimenez changed his stance on the detentions. Federal authorities filed an official request asking that LaCroix be held for them if this case were to conclude. On Tuesday, LaCroix pleaded guilty to two felony cases of driving with a suspended license. His sentence credit for the several weeks he spent in jail, but LaCroix was not released, spurring his lawyers to ask that Judge Hirsch review the legality of the county's Trump-friendly policy. Federal agents went to the jail on Wednesday to pick up LaCour, who spent 28 hours in the Miami-Dade County Jail custody after his state sentence was officially up. 40 hours is a long time. We don't hold people in this country for 40 hours while police do their investigation. LaCour attorney Philip Weinstein, Weinstein told the judge during a hearing on Thursday, or 24 hours or one hour. 
Miami Commissioner Sally Heyman, a lawyer and sponsor of the legislation that backed Jimmy's detention policy, said, I have not seen the judge's order, but I am pleased that these complex legal issues are being reviewed in courts of law. Juan Cuba, chair of the Miami Dade's Democratic Party, said the ruling he sent a signal to the county commission, which approved a policy in the 9 3 vote on February 17th. Mayor and the Jimenez 9 can ignore the community, but they can't ignore the Constitution and the courts. Yeah, so you have to look at everything on all sides. So, um, it's like, damn me, do, damn me, don't. And I know um, Judge Donald Platano I did, uh, did a, a narrated his article, his, his views on it. And, tr- and, tr- and Trump does have that right to hold federal assets, federal funding. So, and um, in that area, because you have to look at all sides. Tenth Amendment and, of course, Article 4, Section 4. And I, I'm, not, I'm not going, I'm not trying to. I don't as like I said before at my past shows. It doesn't matter if you're if you're whiter than me and have the same surname. If you're here in here illegally and in good faith, you can't. You're considered, it's considered trespassing or invasion. But everyone has the right to be heard, get organized, have immigration attorneys ready to go. But if you're a habitual criminal, especially a violent one, yeah, you got to get the hell out. So I see that definitely. Like I said, I'm not a lovey dovey of President Trump. I say I'm critical too, just to give you guys some clarification. And if you guys say I'm a racist, you just blow smoke up your rectums because my response is when bent over vibes or treated as cracks become a race, then we'll talk. So you have to look at those areas. And, and I did, like I said before, I expected this. I'm not surprised. It's like a double edged sword. Okay, so people have got to start really having merit ability. And you, 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 you want to, like I said, about these jails. And here's something about these jails, too, which I, I really is cockeyed. You know, even in, in the local, like Miami Dade County and the state of Florida, a lot of places, even with victimless crime laws, they're going to try to throw people in jail. But one thing I know for sure, like marijuana, they're going to throw people for marijuana. But now they're using citations, which is better. But tired of throwing people in jail for garbage, man. You know, it's like petty stuff. It's totally ludicrous. That's how you ease up the jails. And these corporate, these private prisons, they can stick it. All right? I'll just, I'll just leave it at that. But, um, interesting case. I'm not too surprised at all. Yeah, speaking, okay, speaking in Florida, this one came out. Um, a friend of mine from, um, on Facebook, Tom Balker. Good guy. I just have fun with him all the time on little political views. But, it's out of love. Hopefully he's here in the show. <laughs> I have too much fun with these guys, yeah. But he had a good point. He had he wrote he he, he sent this on Facebook. It's by Wanda Moore from WPTV in West Palm Beach. It says here students asked to sign document not to talk about test to parents. And uh, it says here Braille Rivera of from Boynton Beach is outraged that her 10-year-old daughter, Annabelle, was asked to sign a document at her school. She is not allowed to talk to anyone, including her own parents, about questioning in the Florida Standard Assessment writing test. When I asked her about the test, she started crying and tells me that she can't tell me or she'll be arrested, Rivera said. I was shocked. You're going to arrest a 10-year-old girl for, her. you know, like, what's it, some secret society club? Come on. She was shocked, of course. Rivera said she was upset that her 10-year-old daughter... And her classmates at Renaissance Center School in Point St. Lucie were asked to sign an acknowledgement form without consent of their parents. West Palm Beach lawyer James Green said children can be asked to sign some documents without their parents. Without their parents. Hmm. It's not like a, not like a contract that's enforceable in a court of law, however. It can be enforceable in terms of disciplinary action, Green said. You don't have your effing mind, man. These guys are in Twilight Zone. Revere had no idea her daughter was asked to sign anything until after the fact. No other parent should find out from their child in, in tears that it is being communicated in the, cl- in, the cl- in the class the day of the test, Revere said. Officials with the, offic- the Florida Department of Education said they are providing school districts with a letter for parents in the case of Renaissance Charter School in Port St. Lucie. Officials said they have students the letter to pass on their parents. I never received this letter, Rivera said. 
Several other parents with children at the school confirmed they also didn't know about this, including one mother with a child in the Broward School District. The reason for the secrecy about the test is that the FSA wants to be able to reuse the questions on their essays at a later point. Why? Why would the FSA want to use the same essay questions year after year after year, Rivera said. Rivera said even if she got in the letter, she wouldn't be comfortable with the fact that her daughter is asked to keep something a uh, secret from her. Nolan Void, what the hell these idiots think they're doing? It's like doctrinating students. Sign, don't say a word or you may be going to juvie hall. This is pure blasphemy. 1984 attributes. Okay? That's all it is. And everyone's entitled to look at these papers. Article 1, Section 24 of the Florida Constitution states that. And, of course, which is also known as the Sunshine Law. There's no secret. It's open. The people who pay their confounded taxes to these damn schools shouldn't be censored. Okay? I'm not a parent, but I know a lot of people are, and I find this infuriating. I have, like, second cousins, so second, third cousins, they're going to school. I want to see them in that situation. I just go there, punch them in the confounded mouth. Symbolically speaking. Mind control 101, my friends. Total manipulation as far as I'm concerned. And this is why homeschooling is getting bigger. And governments don't like it. You know what? Piss on you guys. And I hate using certain languages like this, my friends, but this is how I really feel. Government schools, especially on a centralized perspective, is blasphemous. And this here, Florida Department of Education, they need to step down or recall them if they're voted in. Like if, if the Broward District, okay, court, school district defends this, do a recall vote on them. You can do that in the state of Florida on a local level. I think it's statute chapter 100, if, if I'm believing. Folks, you can look it up. I know a lot of you guys out there can make this happen. But, yeah. Really blows people's minds, you know? It really does. Okay, well, next one here came from Op-Ed News. And it's a good release here. Drone resistors acquitted. Jurors tell them keep it, keep doing it. And it's from the UpdateDronesAction.org, the group Upstate, UpstateDroneAction.org. I believe they're from New York. Released a statement Friday morning. Four drone resistors, James Ricks, Daniel Burns, Brian Hines, and Edward Kainan. From the 2015 Big Books, actions were found innocent of all charges at 11 p.m. at the DeWitt Town Court. After deliberating for about an hour and about a, only, a, about, for only about a half hour, the jury returned a verdict of not guilty on all charges. Applause erupted in the courtroom upon the jurors' announcement of the verdict. The four charges with obstruction of government administration, disorderly conduct, and trespass, and faced a year in jail. Following the rendering of the verdict, a juror approached Brian Hines and said, I really support what you're doing. Keep doing it. During the trial, Brian Hines told the jury it's not a case about contested facts. This is a case about contested meanings. Hines went on to explain to the jury that they could, in the words of the Fourth Circuit of Appeals, acquit for any reason which appeals to their logic or passion. That's called jury nullification. Fantastic. A powerful testimony, James Ricks told the jury about a meeting of the families of drone victims and seeing the wreckage of Hellfire missiles. Jurors were brought to tears several times. Daniel Joseph Burns said, Would any of us deem it acceptable for our precious loved ones to be sacrificed for another nation's anticipatory self-defense? Of course not. Moreover, if drones were being aimed at my children by another country, I will hope with all the might that the citizens of that country might try to stop their country's illegal and immoral actions. Edward Kinane told the jury in clear and powerful language about this time, living in Iraq during the war, 
and about the terror sown by drones. The trial resulted from an action on March 19, 2015, on the 12th anniversary of the U.S. illegal invasion of Iraq. Seven members of the upstate coalition to ground the drones and end the wars shut the main gate of the Hancock drone base near Syracuse, New York, with a giant copy of the U.N. Charter and three other giant books, Dirty Wars, by Jeremy Shell, Living Under Drones, NYU and Sanford Law Schools, and You Never Die Twice. That's from Reprieve. Nonviolent activists also held a banner quoting Article 6 of the U.S. Constitution, stating that every treaty signed becomes the supreme law of the land. They brought the books to Hancock to remind everyone at the base the sign of the treaties that prohibit of killing civilians and assassinations of human beings. The group attempted to yet, yet again to deliver a citizen's indictment for war crimes to the Hancock Air Base chain of command. That is great, and I'm very pleased for what they're doing. And um, that's right. Let's give them a little love there. That's absolutely. That is um, part what the information was about. They used the truth on their side and told the jury in his own rhetoric, you are the most powerful people in this courtroom. There is no victim. How is that a crime? Absolutely. None at all whatsoever. And that, that's why I always tell folks time and time again, you when, you when you don't be afraid of going to jury duty, stop making candy-ass excuses. You want to make things happen? You want to make impact? This one obligation, one of the duties you have. And I know I've been do, talking about this many multiple times on my shows on jury notification. I don't have to repeat myself, so. But I am very ha- pleased this happened. It's like, well, Mahler 7, I'm happy with that as well. The jury is tired of the propaganda and the tyranny that's done by criminal elements in our own government. So that's why they work for us, not the other way around. Yeah, that's awesome. All right, next one here. Came from Trapublica.org.uk by Graham Van Bergen. It says here, Germany to censor press, social media, and internet ahead of elections. It must be obvious to anyone watching political events cr- across the Western world that the media is in big trouble. Availability of multimedia news platforms has accelerated a decline in the 21st century of traditional newspapers and even television news. A fact this is not new. The emergence a full blown state censorship in a modern democracy because of the change in news delivery is. Demise of the mainstream media has, of course, been exaggerated by our lack of public trust in journalism and news outlets, with only about one-third of the public trusting it in America. One-third. You know what? That's good. With 18 to 49 years old, trust falling even further, with barely a quarter except the mainstream media as source of reliable information. The story is pretty much the same in Britain and Europe more widely. In America, Clinton's loss at the ballot box ended with the establishment finger firmly pointing to Russia that somehow it puts its finger on the scale to help Trump become triumphant. This has ended with the public trust falling even further as the the Cold War boogeyman is not new either. However, we are not witnessing is the very same strategy in Germany by Chancellor Merkel, who, fighting for a rapidly declining popularity, is already adopting the Obama strategy by blaming Putin and Russian agents for what will be in viable losses at the upcoming election in September 2017. Merkel suffered a sobering defeat in regional elections and her constituency of Malcolm Malkenberg Vatpromerum with her Christian Democratic Union. <laughs> Coming third behind the Social Democrats, SPD, and the right-wing populist Alternative to Deutschland, AFD, a few months back. The consequence is that Merkel wants full censorship of not just the press, but bloggers as well. In addition, Merkel's government is now quite clearly taking absolute control of the public narrative. 
journalists are told that what to write, newspapers what to print. Did Adolf Hitler do something like that? Absolutely. Wow, man. She has a puppy. She probably has a elastic dolls of Adolf Hitler, Stalin, and Mao, and she like she like to do a foursome with them, you know. <laughs> and you guys can think about it and figure it out. <laughs> Political scientist and German journalist Udo Lufkati admitted that he repeatedly had to cooperate with the CIA and German intelligence agencies and was forced to put his name under biased publications under the threat of being fired. In several media interviews, Lufkati revealed how German journalists and politicians are recruited as CIA assets to write stories that were aimed at serving the geopolitical interests of Washington and not the interests of the German people. It sounds like some sort of... um, Excitable fictional novel. Just two weeks ago, the retired head of ZDF Bond, supposedly independent German public service television broadcaster like the BBC, Wolfgang, Dr. Wolfgang Hurls, made an astonishing statement. He admitted that the network and others take orders directly from the German government on what and what not to report. If I'm correct, this is a go backtrack here. Um, Udo Ufkode has it did pass too, so may so be forever free, but. Make sure his legacy never dies in vain. All right. Hurley goes further. We have a problem with that. I'm not mainly talking about the public state media. We have closeness to the government. He revealed not only because commentary is mainly in line with in the great coalition, CSU, CDU, and SPD, with the spectrum of opinion, but also because we are completely taken in by the agenda laid down by the political class. As if that wasn't bad enough, MEPs in the European Parliament fer- fearfully of losing their leader, Merkel, just a few days ago granted the European Parliament President authority to plug, pull the plug on live broadcasts, on preliminary debate in cases of racist speech or acts, and to completely and permanently erase offending video or audio material from the online system. This vaguely worded rule means that it can be manipulated or used as a tool of censorship which, of course, a diktat, diktat, such as this is designed to do, undermines the reliability of the Parliament's archives at a moment where the suspicion of fake news and manipulation threatens the credibility of the media and the politicians, said Tom Ryan Gar- Garner, the president of the Brussels-based International Press Association. The new rule was not made public until it was reported by Spain's La Vendegardia paper newspaper, a wave of sex attacks that spread to cities and towns in all 16 of Germany's federal, Germany's federal states, clearly put considerable strain on Merkel and her open-door policy towards undocumented refugees. The Gates Institute quoted a high-ranking police official in Frankfurt as saying that censorship of, st- of statistics was forced upon them from high office. There are strict instructions from the top not to report offenses committed by refugees. It is extraordinary that certain offenders are deliberately not being reported. <clears throat> Excuse me here. About the new information is being classified as confidential. I'll stop there for a moment. I got to take a shot of my coffee here. Sorry about that. Man, it's Merkel, man. Woo. Talk about Lady Hitler. I, I, I guess her and uh, Hillary Clinton are puppies, unsecret secret lovers take showers together, both wear her and her towels, right? <laughs> I'm being sarcastic today. I'm sorry, folks. <laughs> Social media is under attack well with so-called fake news now classed as hate speech and jihadist propaganda being classed in the same context. What it does is allow the government to borden the classification at will and to demonize any news items such as exposing German political corruption the government simply does not agree with. In other words, the German opposition, dissent, and criticism being targeted and mixed with fake news and hate speech. Recently, a um, new European law also created major major uncertainties about the role of whistleblowers and investigative journalists, and yet another piece of legislation deliberately shrouded in ambiguous text, all information, no matter what, including information about malpractice, can be protected as a trade secret. This opens the door even wider to abuse by power to shut down dissent by introducing gagging laws with threats of penalties akin to that of spying and espionage. How sweet. 
In addition, all these information, oppression tactics, Merkel supported by the EU's plan to impose what can only be described as incredibly strict rules for all communication on the internet. As she is now claiming any negative news of her or her party is really instigated by agents of Russia. <laughs> I'm sorry. It's, it should play, it should play, it should play the song by the Fenwicks, okay? It's called Everyone But You. Everyone's a fascist. Everyone's a frog. Everyone's a phony. Everyone but you. Everyone but you. Here's a song. You, you'd be surprised. In support of the German status quo, Political.eu claims the Federal Security Agency has observed active measures from Russia to influence public opinion. Thomas Holdenwein, the deputy president of the Domestic Security Agency, BFV, warned senior German security officials at a conference in Berlin. The aim, Holdenwein said, was to influence public perception and opinion in our country to the detriment of the German government. In the United States, the CIA has even gone to extend of classifying some 200 dissenting websites and have created a watch list. Woo! The purpose is in time to ban certain identified websites as being anti-establishment and to rubbish others as mere messengers of conspiratorial nonsense. The EU is ready to follow suit as Merkel goes to declare war on fake news and has branded Russia's RT and Sputnik, among others, as dangerous propaganda. Has its pros and cons, but you know what? Stop witch hunting. Good grief. This woman's pathetic. Speaking in Parliament last November, Merkel said that today we have fake sites bots, trolls, things that regenerate themselves, reinforcing opinions with certain algorithms. And we have to learn to deal with them. We must confront this phenomenon and, if necessary, regulate it. Yay! Nanny, 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 Merkel. If people in Germany, she just go to her, go to her capital or her or the prime or the president or her or her domain just fertilize her front doorstep as far as I'm concerned or bring an abandoned porta potty as well have her address the people in there okay also immediately an EU resolution dubbed EU strategic communication to counteract propaganda against it by third parties was passed which called for the EU to respond to information warfare by Russia that further bolsters Merkel's outright censorship of all things digital and in addition, we have the other problem that always emerges in the name of security. After terrorist attacks, many governments are adopting laws that are having a negative impact on press freedom in Germany. It's getting its fair share after a wave of attacks during 2016. The consequence is that an extraordinary act of betrayal of the German people, the government traded citizens, made a data for the NSA's top spy software two years ago. A leaked document emerged last August that a show of huge uplift in the budget of the German domestic intelligence agency, the Vasa Sung Schultz, or which is asking, hope I pronounced that correctly, which is asking for an 18% budget boost in 2017. This document, subsequent reports stated that the increase was entirely targeted at non standardized telecommunications, meanwhile, mean, meaning widely used messaging services such as WhatsApp. You know, it's funny. Intercept the encryption communication system. So they're going to they're, they're gonna throw a, they want an 18% budget. So if they're not, if they're not full, accomplishing or benefiting, they'll probably ask for more. You ever see the same old song and dance, the status quo there, my friends? It's a spiral that has no end, said Frank Herman, private spokesman for the Internet Freedom Democracy Pirate Party in North Rhine, Westphalia. German, Germany's Central Register of Foreign Nationals now keeps a database containing the details of some 20 million non-Germans with the database of the BFV with a budget increase for 595 new jobs. Work for the government, work for Big Brother, and you'll be fine. To help update a network of database kept by Germany, federal and state agencies of individuals and, and far-right and far-left political parties alongside Islamist extremists. This is from Martin Armstrong from Armstrong Economics. Said, censorship by the German government is on its way. There are those in European politics that are now advocating full-blown censorship, fearing the collapse of the EU. Oh, my goodness. Run to the hills. 
state propaganda is uh, is acceptable. But anyone who disagrees is somehow a, a now an agent of Putin. A sumptuous man, a sumptuous man, a sumptuous woman kind of sort of means yes. Exactly. This is one of the last rungs a government breaks before it becomes the enemy of the people. Oh, yeah, man. Can we say New World Order 101? Absolutely. And, of course, this is the German, con- the the German con- Germany's constitution as well. You know what? It's been a while since I uh, checked it out. Let's see here. Let's go to Germany's constitution. Oh, there it is. Oh, I did it last time. Yeah. That's what I thought. And I know they have something on free speech, of course. And let's just see here. Basic law for the Federal Republic of Germany. Ha, 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 ha. They never call it the, you call it the totalitarian Republic of Germany, right? Yeah. And um, 136 pages long. Ooh, man, that's interesting here. I'll try another, I'll try another version here. One moment. But, you know, what I'm saying, my friends, is that's the whole thing. They don't want you to think. They want you to wipe your behind and all that good stuff, right? Absolutely. This is how dumbed down they believe you are. So, you got to start looking at everything in the bigger picture as usual. Ah, that's not there either, okay? Shoot. I got to get these PDF formats. What the heck? Shoot, man. Uh, let's check this one out here. I might do, I might not. Let's just find out. Oh, okay. Good, 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 good. And it's interesting to talk about human dignity, personal freedoms, freedom of faith, freedom of expression, Article 5. Oh, yeah. Let's just, let's just see what else they got here. Right to petition. Yeah, let's just, yeah, let's go with basic rights. I like that. <laughs> Not so basic anymore, right? Your basic rights is just privileges. And of course, here, call out human dignity, personal freedoms. Every person shall have the right to freedom of the development of his personality insofar and does not violate the rights of others or offend against the constitutional order of or moral law. So they're going to try to manipulate that, okay? All right, so, um, I, I, so they're going to try to manipulate that. Oh, you're demoralizing our government. And of course, here, um, Article 2, Subsection 2, every person has the right of life to physical physical integrity. Freedom of the person shall be inviolable. These rights may not be, may be interfered with pursuant to law. So if you harass somebody, that's one thing. But of course, when they say, if you, are, if you offend Merkel, you are, yes, you can be viable. Okay, so, uh, okay, it says here, and under here, um, expression of arts and sciences, every person, this is Article 5, Subsection 1, every person shall have the right to freely to express and decimate his opinions in speech, writings, and pictures, and to inform himself without hindrance from generally accessible sources, freedom of the press, and freedom of reporting by means of broadcast and films shall be guaranteed. There shall be no, there shall be no censorship. So right there, my friends, the peop- the German government, including that global scum queen, Merkel, is breached her oath of office. All right, so I'm definitely going to put that in there. That's Article 5, Subsection 1 of the German Constitution. And like that says here, these rights shall find their limits in provision of general law and provisions for protection of young persons and the right to personal honor. So they're going to try to manipulate that as well. So definitely, that's the thing you got to look at, my friends. These folks here, man, what a bunch of pukes, right? Absolutely. Well, just giving you a heads up there, my friends, in Germany. All right, this one here is from Activist Post. came out yesterday. It's by Matt Agris, right? Yeah, he's, he's good. I like his stuff here. There's some videos on here as well. Former Congresswoman, if Trump goes after high-level pedophiles, it will take down Dems and Republicans. There's one thing that's consistent about Donald Trump is that he is horribly inconsistent. Whether it be flip-flopping on state rights or cannabis law or praising NATO after promising to leave it, where Trump stands on the issues is a crapshoot. That being said, however, there is one issue on which Trump has remained 
steadfast. It is bipartisan and everyone should agree on it. It is time to stop human trafficking. And former Democrat congressman, congressman from Georgia agrees. It is an important note that human trafficking is not the same as working in the sex industry. Those who work in the sex trade, voluntary, are not victims of human trafficking. However, they often find themselves victims of the government and the black market created by the government who pushes their line of work into dark alleys and shady places. As corporate media writes off talk of Pizzagate, it, as it's, it's some, some tinfoil conspiracy theory that couldn't possibly happen, recent busts of pedophile rings are shattering their claims. In fact, after a massive bust in California, Los Angeles County Sheriff Jim McDonald said the arrest represented a very sad commentary on the condition we're dealing with. Pretending this issue doesn't exist only makes, makes us more complicit. Newly elected San Diego Attorney Mara Ely said last month, However, it appears that Donald Trump has decided that he won't be he won't be party to those who to deny the horrid reality that is sex um, child sex trade. Trump held a, a press conference last week in which he detailed his plans to go after victims of the human trafficking epidemic, as he explained. You can watch the videos on there, okay, folks. In the most of these recent busts, however, many of those arrested were simply willing adults seeking a mutual beneficial arrangement for sex with another willing adult. These facts do not belittle the necessity to go after trial, traffic, event, child traffickers. However, this show how much money is squandered in forcing the government's version of morality on society. The funds allocate to go after voluntary sex trade could help to expose the real monsters behind human trafficking. Let there be no doubt who engage in the child sex trade are society most vile at many times the most elite. Former Congresswoman Cynthia McKinney also agrees with Trump. However, she takes a step further, noting that going after child predators will lead to the downfall of both Republicans and Democrats, as this problem goes all the way to the top. For those who don't remember McKinney, she is a congressman who bravely questioned the elite on the House floor about the role in the child traffic industry. As Free Thought Project has pointed out, pedophilia among the elite is rampant. The problem has gotten so bad in England that the officials issued an order last month to stop naming streets and landmarks after local heroes and politicians because they could be, later be exposed as pedophiles. And I have read and I have uh, read that and I put in my past shows on certain towns. I think one of them may be Essex. I could be mistaken, but I remember reading about that. And um, in February, the Free Thought Project reported on the fact that the police chief recently came forward and confirmed that the former Prime Minister of England, Sir Edward Heath, had raped dozens of children. The department also noted that how those within the government helped cover up these crimes. In December, we reported on a massive sex ring, sex ring, child sex ring that was blown apart in Norway. The investigation quickly to led arrest of 51 people, men, all men who are so involved in the case. 24 of them come from Horland or Song on Sangog Fordane. 26 come from the areas of Norway from the southeast of Finnmark in the north. Among the accused offenders, there is also one Swedish national, two politicians, uh, one labor politician from Oslo, and a former National Con Progressive Party politician from east of Norway are involved in the case. One is also a kindergarten teacher, and four of uh, the 51 arrested were perpetrators in the evidence, video evidence collected some heavy duty stuff there domestically these higher levels of rest are few and far between as anytime the elite are mentioned alongside the term pedophile the predatory regard the aka corporate media shout down all those who dare pose any questions however even though the media won't report on it these disgusting child prayers are so vile they are they are hard to ignore in january Admitted child rapist, former speaker of the House, who's currently in jail, Dennis Hassert, came across our radar after he demanded one of the children he raped pay back the hush money to given him by Hassert be broke because he broke his silence about the rape. When the victim, known as Individual A, broke his silence, Hassert's child rapes were exposed, resulting in the subsequent prosecution to extend any contract existed between plaintiff. And individual A and defendant Halford Hassert. Hassert. Plaintiff reached that contract, Hassert lawyers wrote. 
Plaintiff's breach of, con of con conduct resulted in damages to the defendant, and plans is accordingly required to return $1.7 million to the defendant. Individual A did not go public with this information. He merely spoke to the FBI after transactions were uncovered by investigators. However, the sicko couldn't care less about airing this repugnant grievance in the public forum, as it's almost entirely ignored by the media. There was also another massive pedophilia scandal in the United States, and what became known as a Franklin Checks Out Child Sex Ring cover-up. Once the FBI took over the investigation from state authorities, however, it turned into a witch hunt to per persecute the child victims, going so far as to charge them with perjury in a successful attempt to scare the other 70-plus victims to recant their testimony regarding child sex ring. It appears, for at least to the time being, that Donald Trump is aware of this problem and is intended to take it out. However, we will wait, have to wait and see. And um, and I have to agree. And like I say, he did an executive order. It's in my past episodes. I did read it. You can look it up yourself on an executive order on going after these um, child traffickers. So, like, even though, like I said, I'm critical of Trump in a lot of areas, too. However, I, I, he's a grandfather as well. So, may have a conscience, that's up to him. I'm not going to hold my breath, but he's got to let his action speak louder than his words. So, um, this is really disturbing. And, um, I know Cynthia McKinney got, got off the air recently, and she was on the Richie Allen show talking about, uh, about the child um, pedophile ring, too. Was, uh, he has um, um, sex trafficking. And that is, is essential, man, because this is not just his. It's the, not just his, but the world. It's going on worldwide. And it has to fully accelerate. And if it does, if some bastards and politicians get caught in it, so be it. Let everything crumble at our feet. Our rights can never be taken away by these scumbags. But governments can be altered. If this occurs, if it crumbles, so be it. And I am digressing. All right. Well, finally, this came from AmericanMilitaryNews.com. That's what was written. Who, who wrote this? Uh, person named Stafford 10, Stafford Wright, Staff Writer 10, came out yesterday. He says, Minnesota Democrat pushes to gift taxpayer funds to gun control groups. Minnesota State Senator Jeff Hayden is pushing the legislation that will give $200,000 taxpayers money to gun control groups as an an annually as a gift. He announced this idea in a recent press conference where he thanked Michael Bloomberg funded Moms Demand Action for, organize, for their organizing power. I'm just wondering if he's involved in a secret club. <laughs> the bill reads, this act may be cited as a Taylor Hyden Gun Violence Prevention Act to reduce numbers of injuries and deaths and innocent individuals in the community and to increase community safety the commissioner of human services shall develop a competitive building process to award grants to nonprofit organizations with expertise in gun violence prevention a nonprofit or, uh, organization awarded a grant must use the money for gun violence prevention or public awareness and education campaigns on gun violence prevention how about violent crime hayden good grief you knucklehead hayden's efforts stemmed from his death of his sister Taylor Hayden. She was killed in July 2016 in Atlanta, Georgia, when she and her friends were out for the night in the town. When they departed the establishment they were at, the group had upon a dispute between the two parties. Taylor was used as a human shield by one of the parties and was shot twice and ultimately killed her. The altercation was a bad drug or the drug deal gone bad. Sorry to hear about that, Mr. Hayden. A little shame of what occurred. My sister represented everything we need. We want our children to represent gun violence as a public health crisis, Hayden say. Hayden supports gun control in Minnesota with prevention and outreach. He plans to use $200,000 annual gift in order to get people to understand what happens when you use a gun. First of all, it's a real disturbing what happened to his uh, sister. Okay, I will have condolences in that and anyone else. But it's not gun violence. It's violent crime. Drug deal gone bad. What happened there? I'm not a... Uh, the drug war to me was a, just a total sham anyway. 
But that's not to me. That's not really an excuse. It's doing things uh, acidine. You got to stop. You got to fight violent crime as a whole, even in his own state of Minnesota, even in Atlanta. Because sometimes these lobbyists, it's, called, it's big business for them. And don't get me wrong. I know there's a lot of people throw a lot of money to the NRA as well. Lobbyist groups too. So they throw money around also. But this whole thing of conscripting taxpayers' money as a gift to a certain group, regardless, is wrong. It's involuntary servitude. Uh, so that's how I look about. That's how I look at it. Shoot it down, my friends, in Minnesota. This is unacceptable. And you know what? That is it. I'd like to thank everyone for listening. Plus, feel free to download and share this throughout your social media networks. If you have any questions, comments, or you want to send me some information that uh, I could be interested in, wherever you do, please deliver your correspondences with decorum. Hit me on Facebook, Twitter, Google+, Spreaker, iHeartRadio, Tumblr, YouTube, Freedoms Network, Scene.Life, and Minds.com. Or you can email me at LokiLuck3, which is LokiLuck, the number three, at gmail.com. All right, folks. Looks like I may not be doing anything over the weekend, but you never know. Hopefully you have a safe one out there, okay, my friends? Once again, thank you for your time. Plus, always remember that the maniac resistance is healthy for the soul and can liberate humanity. Until next time, take care of yourselves. Keep on spreading the love, and may your guardian spirits be with you.